Hello everyone, it's Mrs. Fontra here, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite times in all of art history, and that is the Renaissance. Can you say Renaissance? Renaissance. It's really kind of a fun word to say. So let's jump right in and talk about how it fits into the rest of art history, all right? Renaissance was around 1400 or 1000. 400 to 1600 CE or people call it AD sometimes too so that's like our common era this is kind of close to where we are today and renaissance actually means rebirth or renewal or kind of like bringing something back to life and before the renaissance Europe fell into this time known as the middle ages or the dark ages um, and the Renaissance was about rediscovering the old ways that the Greeks and Romans used to do things, all right? So um, they started to value education more and science and art, which is why we're talking about it. Um, literature and writing and music and people, they started to kind of bring back some old values from the ancient times. And some very famous artists during these times, and we'll talk a little bit more about them, are Donatello, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo and Raphael. Okay, maybe those names sound a little familiar, and we'll talk about why in just a minute. But if you think, whoa, whoa, maybe, wait a second, like what all happened in between there? Because we, we talked about cave art earlier this year, we talked about ancient Mesopotamian art, and usually we talk about ancient Egyptian art as well. We kind of do those every other year, but what happened in between? So let me show you with art and how things kind of changed, all right? So if you look back at sculptures from ancient Egyptian times, they were pretty, uh, pretty like new and like there was a new thing to do. So the people didn't look quite as realistic and they had their arms kind of close to the body so they wouldn't get broken off. But as time went on with the Greeks and the Romans, they learned how to get pretty good at making these sculptures look like actual people. You can see from the timeline of how the statues changed, they look more and more realistic, right? All the way up to the Romans with that really realistic looking robe that she has on with all those frillies and those blowing in the wind looks really realistic, right? But then after the Romans came these Middle Ages or the Dark Ages. And you can see uh, on the left, there is a sculpture from the Roman times that's very detailed, very realistic. You can see like the fabric, it looks like a real person almost, right? But in the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages, art wasn't really as important anymore. They wanted art for one main reason, and that was to kind of tell the story of Christianity or religion, because that's what was really important about uh, at that time. So it didn't really matter if the art was as realistic as it used to be, as long as it told the story they wanted, okay? So that's why art changed, because they valued or thought things were more important, which happens sometimes in history, right? And so this is where the Renaissance comes back into play, where, we bring these old ideas back, these old styles, these old things that are important, and here we are, all right? So, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are four very famous artists from this time, uh, Donatello, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo, and you might know them from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, I'm not sure who created this show or thought it'd be good to name them after Renaissance artists, but hey, it's an easy way to remember all of them, right? So... Um, I like to pretend that they're the heroes, though. Give them the masks and the superpowers. <laughs> so, let's get into some art that's new from the Renaissance and compare it to some art that we may have seen from other classes. So, for example, this is from, uh, this piece on the right is cave art with two bisons. It's just a sculpture with clay around some rocks in a cave. And the one on the left from the Renaissance is called The Pieta by Michelangelo. Now, normally in class, we have a big discussion to see what is similar or what's different. So maybe take a minute to think, hmm, how are these similar? How are these different? Hmm. One thing that's similar is they're both three-dimensional. They're both something made out of clay or marble. So it's something you could walk around and see all the way around. Um, but one thing that's very different is even though they're both realistic, you can both tell what they are. They're people and animals, but one of them is animals and one of them is a person and people and they're very realistic right it almost looks like you could put your hands right into right into that lady's robes it looks like real 
right? I know a lot of people, when they see this piece at first, they think, oh my gosh, like there's a dude that's just laying there. Well, the story behind this piece is that it's Mary and Jesus after he, her son died. So it's supposed to be really kind of a sad piece. So you wouldn't be wearing a full piece suit, right? He's not, he died, so it's kind of sad. Um, but anyway, the whole point of the Renaissance is being realistic and kind of having some religious stories behind it too, to kind of bring the Middle Ages together with the Renaissance. So that's how that kind of happened, all right? So again, very, very realistic, right? Here's another one to kind of look at, uh, the Renaissance versus ancient Egyptian. Um, the painting from the Renaissance is done by Raphael. And the one on the right, we don't know the artist because it's so old, but maybe you can see that they're, they are both people, right? They're both people that are painted, but the one from the Renaissance by Raphael is very realistic, right? You can see those pudgy little baby arms. It looks like you could just give a baby a little, little pinch on the cheek. It's so realistic, right? There's light and dark and medium values all through it. Like the Egyptian one is all just solid black hair or solid skin or solid colors. It's very solid, but even just looking at like, um, this lady's uh, uh, red shirt. Look how many different types of red are mixed in, right? There's light red, medium red, dark red, there's shadows. There's so many, many colors in that, right? So it looks a little bit more realistic, right? All right, on to one more to show you. Um, we'll be talking about uh, some more um, impressionist artists in the future here, but one of them we like talking about is Claude Monet, and you can see his painting on the right with lots of bright colors and kind of a sunset, a little fuzzy looking. And the one on the left is a painting by Leonardo da Vinci, right? Um, you can see, well, again, I think the big theme here is it's very realistic, right? Um, you can see the people, there's an angel, there's a garden, there's some landscape, but in the way back, it looks pretty realistic. Monet has really bright colors, and do they have as bright of colors from the Renaissance? Not as bright as Monet, and then his artwork was made a couple hundred years later, so they had better paints then. So the colors are much brighter for Impressionist and Monet kind of art, all right? So from here, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna get out of here for just a second, but um, I'm gonna be getting into what your grades project is because it might be based on one of the artists we learned about or maybe some other common thing from Renaissance. So stay tuned and find out. All right, fourth grade, your project is kind of a big deal because during the Renaissance, they discovered this idea called one point perspective which is this idea that everything in a space eventually will connect to one point. So what I mean by that is if you would be looking down a really long hallway, if you're at school looking down the hallway, and you see it looks like the hallway gets smaller as it gets further away, right? Um, it doesn't actually get smaller, but it just kind of looks like it, right? It's this kind of trick of the brain, the trick of the mind that makes it look like it's getting smaller. Um, or if you're like walking, or if you're in the middle of a street, watch for cars, but if you're in the middle of the street, it looks like the, the road gets smaller as it goes further away. And that's the idea that everything is vanishing to a point. So we're gonna kind of play with this idea using simple shapes, okay? As you get older in fifth and sixth grade, we'll get into this a little bit more, talking about like landscapes and more complicated shapes, but this is a great one to begin with. Um, so actually, let me show you what I got. I over, always forget to grab something. Um, we're gonna be doing something that looks like this, okay? So um, let's get our shape set up first before, before we start like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff. Let's get our shape started and then we'll get into like how you connect it to a point, okay? For this project, you're gonna need a piece of paper you're gonna need a ruler of some sort. Um, you might have one already attached to like a protractor or a small ruler, which will help. Otherwise you could always use like the edge of a hardcover book or something with just like a straight line. Or you could actually like use another pencil if you need to um, and a pencil, all right? Also it'd be very helpful if you have something to color with and perhaps a Sharpie or a black marker of some sort to kind of help our shapes pop a little bit. So. We'll worry about that in a little bit, but let me switch my cameras to kind of get us started as to how to get this set up. All right, 
So um, I have my paper and today I'm actually gonna go the long way with my paper. Okay, the long horizontal full way. And what I'm gonna do near the middle, does not need to be perfect, I'm gonna just put a dot with my paper. And that is gonna control, it's really, I'm gonna make that a little bigger so you can see it. Um, that is gonna control the rest of our drawings at some point. But before you get all worked up or nervous or scared, we're gonna just draw some shapes to begin with, okay? So with your ruler, we wanna do very geometric or very straight edged uh, shapes. If you wanna do curves, it's gonna get much, much more tricky. And we can talk about that in a little bit, but let me draw a couple shapes just to get us started. Um, you're gonna to wanna, to, if I put my ruler kind of across my paper, you're gonna to wanna to put three shapes on the top half and three shapes on the bottom half. So if you remember what mine looked like, a little bit like this, like square, hexagon, triangle. But don't worry about the other lines yet, okay? So just uh, just to draw a couple, I'm gonna do a uh, triangle over here. And like I said, it's not gonna be always a perfect shape, but if you're using a ruler, it's gonna help kind of keep those lines a little easier, okay? Just a triangle. Um, I'm gonna do maybe another um, four-sided, five-sided shape. I don't know. And they don't, like, it doesn't have to be a perfect square. It's okay if they're kind of weird, because, you know, shapes don't always have to be exactly what you want them to be. Um, this one kind of looks like a zigzag. I'm kind of excited about that. All right. There we go. I got a really crazy shape to show you as an example, too. All right. And I'm going to, just to show you, I'm going to do a circle. Now, it's easy if you have something to trace. So I'm actually going to grab a jar of glitter that I have, and I'm going to just trace a circle. You don't need to do a circle or a curved shape. But if you do, I just want to tell you how that's going to work. OK, I know lots of people like drawing hearts or other sorts of um, curved shapes. So I'm just going to give you an example. And of course, I get glitter all over my paper. What was I thinking? <laughs> all right. So you remember many, many years, if, you, if you've been here for as long as I have, I talk about playing the line game. And that's that idea is if you're drawing a line and if anything is in the way, you can't keep drawing it. You hit something, you're done. Game's over. All right. So we're going to be trying to connect every corner that we have for all of our shapes to this dot. Okay. And you'll see some of them will be fine and some of them won't. Okay. So for example, with my ruler, I'm going to start with my triangle because that was the first one I drew. I'll say, okay, here's one corner. And I'm going to try to use my ruler to connect it to the dot. So I'm going to kind of sweep it over. Oh, look at that. From this corner to the dot, there's nothing in the way. So that means I can draw it. So I'll go whoop, and I'll connect it to that vanishing point. All right, let's try another corner. I'm going to do this bottom one over here. Put that here, line it up with my vanishing point, And oh, nothing is in the way. So I can go whoop, slide it right there. We're off to a good start. And you can kind of see it looks like it's popping out of that of that spot, which is kind of what we're going for. Now the top of my triangle, I'm going to try to connect here. And you can see already, I'm going to hit this corner of my shape. So let me, let's see how this works out here. Top corner of my triangle to the dot. And as I'm drawing it, whoa, I have to stop. I'm all done. My shape is blocked. I can't go anymore. Line game over. All right. So that's the general idea. So let's talk about a confusing shape, okay? So for example, we know this bottom corner, well, it might, it might get really close to my triangle or it might even like share a line, but I'll go here, go to my dot, mm, be all right. Looks good, bottom is connected. All right, this bottom should go pretty well too. I'm gonna go to this bottom corner. Say, yep, nothing's in the way here, mm, okay? But then you get some that are kind of stuck in like this one these are pointing out these are stuck in um so for example this corner if i even line up the ruler the ruler is going through the whole shape so can i do that one no i can't um this one right here if i put my pencil on it and try to line up my ruler nope my whole shape is there i can't even do that one okay so some points you might not be able to connect um if i do this top one up here try to connect it to my dad, put my pencil here put my ruler on the dot. Well, I can connect part of it. So I'll go 
game over. I hit my shape, can't keep going. And we're gonna go over here and do the same thing. So you gotta really be thinking like, pencil on corner, ruler on dot. Can I draw? Yes. Can I draw all the way? Maybe, maybe not. This one is a no. So I have to stop right there. All right, and that's all I can do for that one. Now, like I said, the more complicated shapes are, the more, more lines you're gonna have going on. For curves, here's the lesson here. You don't have a corner to start. You're like, what am I doing? I don't know. And that, where, where do you go? Where do you begin? So where do you begin? You actually start with your ruler on that point, on that vanishing point, And you kind of move or rotate your ruler until it falls off your shape. Okay? So if I'm on my dot and I'm going nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, I hit my circle. That's where you can connect it then if you have a curved shape like that. Okay? So from here, I got the bottom of my circle, but now I'm like, okay, there's a circle in the way. I can't draw anything. And oh, I got to my top edge here. And I can connect that dot like this all the way to the top. All right? So you are going to be doing, like I said, three shapes on top and three shapes on the bottom, okay? So let me switch my camera around here. So when you're all done, I would like you to color them in so you know which lines go with which, okay? You can see on this one, I colored the very front shape that I started with. I made that one really, really dark, okay? For all my shapes. And then the other sides, I did lighter and kind of a medium color, okay? So you can kind of play around with uh, light, medium, and dark colors for your one point perspective shapes, all right? So I know this is a tricky one. So um, if you have any questions, comments, and concerns, please let me know. Um, like I said, or like I was telling you earlier, if you want to outline these with Sharpie so you see them a little bit clearly when you're all done, that's a great idea. You don't need to, but it's gonna make it easier to be like, okay, this goes to that shape, and this goes to this shape, so you can kind of see it a little bit easier, all right? Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, please let me know. Um, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there too as, as well for One Point Perspective. So if my version or my explanation wasn't quite enough for you, maybe you could look there as well. But like I said, if you want to know anything or have me try to explain it in a different way, I would happily, happily, happily try to help you out with that. All right. Please put these into the Google Classroom when you're all done so I can mark them off in my book. And I uh, look forward to seeing what you come up with for your One Point Perspective based on the Renaissance. Happy creating.